Hi, my name is Andres Abeta with Bootcamp GIS. I'm here with my daughter, Amelia, uh, who's a recent graduate. And we're here to start a video series called How to Get a GIS Job. Amelia, you recently graduated uh, with a degree in what from where? I just graduated from Cal Poly and I was in the biology field. And I noticed that a lot of my friends, including me, were having trouble finding a job right after college and it was just really hard to find the necessary skills in the industry um, and have all of that right off the bat. Yeah, I'm talking and advising students from around the world really in the same situation. All right, in this uh, first step in our video, it is to identify the gap between what you learn in college and what the jobs are asking for. That's often the hardest thing to look introspectively and think, you know what, my degree may not be enough. So Amelia, let's go into Indeed and take a look at um, a job that you think, hey, this is something I would like to pursue and identify what skills they're asking for and let's see if you have them. If you don't, then we're going to enter them into a sheet and um, that's the first step, like any counseling, recognition of the problem. All right, where we're going to get started is with our Google Sheet uh, titled How to Get a GIS Job. This is a resource you can download from these videos and it's going to be the structure in which we'll march forward. What you can see in step one here is how to identify your skills gap. And it's um, going to give a list of some of the GIS skills that we know that are most commonly on the GIS job announcements. But let's really make this a lot more personalized to the job that you're after. So Amelia, um, we may delete some of these skills, we may add some skills, but it's really going to be driven by the thing that matters most. What is the job asking for? So as we go to Indeed right now, let's go look for some job skills and we'll come back and edit the sheet. All right, looks like you have found a job. Tell me a little bit about this one. I just searched up what I was interested in. I was looking at some GIS ecologist jobs and I found this one, wildlife biologist or environmental planner. And it looks like if I scroll down to the qualifications that they need some experience here. All right, 70 to 110,000 a year. That's awesome. I hope you get this job. Yeah. All right, so what kind of uh, skills are they asking for in this uh, position? Well, it looks like in the qualifications, you have to have a minimum of a bachelor's in biology, ecology, or a related field. That's you. That is me. Check. Familiar with California flora and fauna. Uh, did you learn that in school? Somewhat. Somewhat. So do you feel like there's room to grow? Definitely. Okay, let's go to your sheet and enter that in. A good working knowledge of federal and California laws. I'm not too familiar with that. Enter in your sheet. Previous experience with environmental studies and GIS applications are strongly preferred. Okay, that's two different things. Environmental studies, did you ever take a class in that? I did. All right, enter it in. And then a separate one, GIS and GPS are two different things. So let's say GIS applications and then GPS. GPS is usually collecting data out in the field and getting locational data. Were there any more qualifications or those are the main tech qualifications, right? Those are the main qualifications for this job. All right, with our checklist, just check the box for the ones that you feel like you have a proficiency with. Okay, so it looks like I have done environmental studies and I kind of know about California flora and fauna. Okay, you can always read more about that and then that'll satisfy that. Okay, so we already have a list of a bunch of GIS skills, but they're not asked, uh, being asked for in this job announcement, so let's just remove them off the list. So records uh, seven, yeah, items three through seven, you might be needed on a different job announcement. But these other things, spatial modeling and GIS development, mm, I think that's for sure gonna be useful. Data science, no, so that item 11, you can gray out. So those aren't needed for this particular job, but they're normally needed for other jobs? Yeah, and they may be something that you, you learn or um, can apply to different jobs. Either way, the more skills, the better. Just for right now, let's focus on this particular job announcement and know if we're you know, covering all of the items they're asking for. This is the first step, is identifying what it is that you are missing from the job announcement because if you don't have those keywords on your job submission and can cover and say, I'm proficient at this, you're likely not gonna get an interview and often you're gonna get filtered out from any job submission because there's filters that look for those keywords. 
All right, so we've got a pretty good list of what the job uh, is asking for and how you would qualify. Um, with ArcGIS Online, I think you've taken a class using that and do some basic intro stuff in GIS. Yeah, so, so I'll check that off. Okay. Um, ArcGIS Pro is a little more heavy with uh, tool-based usage, so you probably, I done that. probably need more of that. And then for these other things, these are higher level GIS skills, spatial modeling, image processing, GIS development. I highly encourage you to uh, figure out where you can go take a class to learn some of those skill sets. Where would I do that? Well, that's in our next video. Uh, we will be talking about places to learn. Um, but in the meantime, if it's not a full class, like some of these things, uh, learning about um, uh, some of the federal laws in California, there's documents that you can read, and maybe even YouTube videos these days that you could uh, get some exposure to that. So anything you can do to put on your resume that says that you've done this and read about it and performed some sort of uh, work in that area will help you become competitive. So you don't need a certificate for any of these things to prove that you actually know it? Some of them, yes, especially technical certificates and software. But some of these things are a little more um, generic, like knowing some of the laws in environmental work in California. That's probably, I'd, you could go to some YouTube videos or read a book or volunteer with a, an environmental ecologist so he can show you something like a, some field work or an internship. Uh, different ways, as long as you're confident and be, being able to describe your effort in that area, that's what's going to happen in an interview. They're going to ask you a question, and then you've got to describe your experience, and, um, and that should work. Awesome. All right, so I know what skills I do know, and I know what skills I don't know. So now what? The next video, we're going to show you how to go identify the places to learn the things you don't know. All right, so make sure to download the worksheet, uh, follow us, and head to the next video for step two.